Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Strategy Management Group webinar, The Art of Strategic Thinking, Getting Execution Right. We um, are very honored that you um, took some time out of your busy schedule to join us today. My name is Doug Maris, and I'll serve as a moderator for today's session. Just a couple housekeeping items. Um, first of all, we will have a Q&A session at the end of this webinar, and so if you have a question, you can locate on your control panel, find the questions box, and type in your question there, and we will do our best to answer as many as, as we can. We have over 900 uh, participants registered for today's webinar, which is very exciting, um, so I apologize in advance that chances are we may not be able to address every question that comes in. Um, second thing, I wanted to mention this webinar is being recorded and the replay will be available um, in a couple days. I think we're shooting to have that ready by Thursday the 18th. And at that time we will email everyone a link to the recording um, as well as post the replay on our website. So with that, I'm privileged to introduce Randall Rollinson, our presenter today. Uh, Randall is a founder and the president, LBL Strategies which is a federally certified veteran-owned strategy management um, company um, providing strategic planning and performance management training consulting services located in Chicago, Illinois. Um, Randall also serves as Senior Vice President with the Strategy Management Group who is sponsoring today's webinar, um, the parent company to the Balanced Scorecard Institute. Uh, Randall has taught for DePaul University, University of Illinois, Chicago, George Washington University School of Professional Studies, and he has provided strategic planning management consulting for over 30 years with literally hundreds of organizations. Most recently, companies you'd recognize such as Toyota, um, Exelon Utilities, and the American Veterinary Medical Association. So with that, Randy, I turn it over to you. Doug, thank you. It's, it's really good to be with all of you this, uh, this afternoon or morning, wherever you may be. Uh, I really like this uh, quote from Henry Ford. It really does a nice job of summarizing uh, how we think about uh, uh, strategic thinking. It's hard work, and, and that's probably the, the reason most people don't do it. When I, when I first read that or heard that, it stuck with me, and it's something that I keep on my whiteboard in my office. So strategic thinking is hard work. So um, we're really pleased to be here with you today. This is a little bit about my background. Uh, Doug mentioned uh, the first two bullet points. But I've been doing this sort of work for a long time now. The first uh, strategic plan I worked on was in 1907 for a community organization and start doing this work professionally over the years, either in a consulting or uh, kind of an education model where you do a project. I've been involved in oh, somewhere around 2,600 strategy management um, planning processes. Um, I come out of a counseling facilitator background. Uh, I consider myself to be more of a social entrepreneur. Um, however, um, we, we are, we're about making money just like anybody else. Um, I wrote uh, a book along with a co-author in um, called Strategy in the 21st Century. And that, that's uh, something that we use, the book we use in our course that we run in conjunction with uh, George Washington University. I'm deeply involved in the Association for Strategic Planning and the co-founder of the Chicago chapter and the current uh, chapter president and have been deeply involved in the association certification program and the body of knowledge that underpins it. And like uh, all of you, or many of you, most of you, I've spent a long time in school. So that's a little bit about my background. I want to start by just uh, sharing with you some uh, kind of how I think. And so this is within a framework that we call the Strategy Management Performance System. This is what we teach at our uh, course that we run with GWU. Um, and if you think about strategy, it really kind of breaks down into assessing and organizing, understanding the environment, formulating strategy, uh, putting together a plan, and then um, implementing and controlling that plan. My guess if I surveyed all of us that are on the call, we could, most of us anyway, the vast majority of us would agree that these are the phases in, in strategy management. 
Now each of us may have a little different way of being able to go about it. Uh, here are the steps that you know I think about and today's uh, webinar is certainly not about the steps involved in strategy management. It's about strategic thinking and strategic thinking um, really relates to this entire discipline. Uh, we have to think strategically as we're trying to understand the environment around us, you know, what customers, key stakeholders expect. We have to think strategically as we're looking at the culture and operations of our organization from an internal perspective and what matters and what doesn't. Um, we need to think about Think strategically when we're defining the overall direction. Where is it that we're going? You know, what, it, what does success look like? Clearly, strategic thinking has a, a primary role there, uh, as it does in, uh, in developing the plan. There are many different ways to move forward. What are the strategies? What are the initiatives? Uh, we need to pick those that are going to have the greatest impact and likelihood that we accomplish what we set out to do. Strategic thinking is, is, is integral to execution and measuring what matters most. If uh, There are all kinds of things that we can measure, but we want to focus on those vital few metrics, not the trivial many that uh, oftentimes we see organizations um, tracking. <clears throat> and then lastly, strategic thinking drives alignment during the execution process, and it's here that we're going to focus today. Uh, today's webinar is about the role of strategic thinking related to strategy execution. So why are we focusing on um, this topic, strategic thinking in relationship to plan execution? Well, we can just look at some of what's out there in the literature, and we know from PMI um, that only about 9% of companies are rated excellent at execution. This is work that they did back in 2014. Uh, during that same time frame, they also report that only about 56% of strategic initiatives are actually successful, accomplish what they set out to do. Uh, some of the work done at Harvard tells us that only 11% of managers uh, believe that their strategic priorities have uh, the right resources behind them, whether it be financial or people, if we're going to succeed. Uh, oftentimes we um, think about what we would like to be able to accomplish but don't align the, the resources behind it. That's a frequent pitfall. And then Harvard also pointed out that 30% um, of managers cite failure to coordinate across the various units as, as the biggest challenge they face in strategy execution. So we know this is a real sore point for organizations. We can do all the environmental assessment work and planning work we uh, choose to do, but if it doesn't result in successful execution, uh, I'm not sure how important or how uh, meaningful this work is. So execution is where it's at. So our perspective on strategy execution, and I mentioned I did a webinar um, uh, on a couple months ago on the seven competencies required to manage strategic performance. And this slide I pulled from that deck because it's kind of fundamental to how I think about the work that we're doing here. So if strategy execution really translates into being good at managing strategic performance, I make the argument that there's three components. You have to have a process. You have to have a framework. Uh, just to go out, get people in a room and ask them where we're going, how we're going to get there and write it all down, that doesn't work very well. So the importance of having some type of framework is absolutely important. But I would make the argument that far more important than the process is that people have competencies. The people in the organization understand and are skilled in, in certain competencies uh, that we'll, we'll talk about as, as we go along here um, and integrate some of what I covered in the last webinar as best I can. And then the third component is organizational capabilities. Now, all three of them, you need a management, you need competencies, and you need capabilities. And my argument is we should invest in building competencies because the stronger the strategic management competencies are of the organization, so goes their capabilities. And as our capabilities to execute strategy 
improve and flourish, then we can then and only then are we able to really truly manage strategic performance. So that's my uh, that's my uh, perspective uh, on on um, the topic today. So as I've said. Uh, strategic thinking, and this is kind of a different way of looking at it, more of a classic formulate, execute, evaluate and control. We have this feedback loop that tells us whether it's working or not and provides into, input into the next cycle and a, a team depends on this. But I want to emphasize this role of ex operational execution because as we get into execution there's, there's always one constant. The environment is changing new opportunities present themselves. So strategic thinkers, um, when they're good strategic thinkers, are aware of new opportunities when they come along and are able to adapt to the situation as it unfolds. So this, this idea, thinking drives execution, is absolutely vital because as we get down into implementing it, changes oftentimes have to be made. Priorities need to be juggled. Um, being able to make trade-offs is all part of operational execution, and I'll come to that point a little later in, in the program. The fundamental starting point for strategy execution, from my perspective, is there needs to be a shared vision, not the all-knowing leader's vision, but a vision that is shared up and down the organization without a clear focus on what success looks like, what we're trying to accomplish, uh, it makes it very difficult to keep a team focused as we move into execution. So a foundational element to all of this is a shared vision of success. This is a classic example, and many or most of you, or maybe even all of you, have heard this before, but it makes the point that I'm trying to get at, so I'm going to repeat it here. In the 1960s, and for those of you who are, who are baby boomers, you'll, you'll remember this, uh, President Kennedy um, told the nation, uh, I remember watching this on a black and white TV, that we're going to put a man on the moon and we're going to bring him home safely by the end of the decade. That was, that was I think it was 1960, so a 10-year period. A few years after that proclamation, that goal had been established by the president, a group of reporters went to NASA to see how things are going, to see if we were on track, making progress. So the reporters had their meeting with the key executives and asked their questions. And as one of the reporters was leaving the NASA facility, he happened to notice in one big room uh, this, this one gentleman, this one custodial worker, uh, vacuuming the floor. So he had the idea, I'm just going to stick my head in here and see how things are going from, uh, from, this, from this worker's perspective. So he went in and uh, the gentleman stopped and he asked him what his job was and you know, what, he, what, he, what he's trying to accomplish. And the man turned to him and said, my job is to put a man on the moon and bring him home safely. He knew that if dust or particles got in the lander and it could disrupt uh, being able to um, get the astronaut back to the mothership. That is alignment when people up and down the organization know what success looks like. In this case, we, we certainly succeeded. We put a man on the moon, we brought him home safely. So I want to pose a question for all of you to think about in your organization. Does your entire, and I underscore, and well, it's not underscored, but I emphasize entire, have line of sight and clear alignment to the strategic direction of your organization? If that's not the case, that's where we need to begin, is making sure everyone knows what success looks like and their role in it. With a clear, shared vision, that can lead us to strategic alignment. At the organization level, being absolutely clear about our vision, mission, strategies, and objectives, so that we can enable our units within the organization to be able to align their objectives with what the organization, the enterprise itself, is trying to accomplish. And then ultimately, leading to 
individuals or small teams, their objectives align with their department, align with the you know, enterprise level objectives up towards the vision. Providing that very clear line of sight. That, that to me, uh, after, after 30 plus years of doing this work, if we don't get to alignment, if we don't get to where everyone in the organization knows what we're trying to accomplish, how we're going to get there, it makes it virtually impossible uh, to uh, really execute strategic thinking in any meaningful way. It's more just hand to mouth, reacting to the environment around it. So I would challenge all of you to take a close look to see if this type of line of sight is at work in your organization. I want to kind of jump off that now to uh, into um, more of a, um, a specific conversation. When I refer to strategic alignment, uh, I'm really uh, getting at uh, this idea of, of what part of the budget are we going to focus on. I, I'm not really, as Kaplan and Norton pointed out to us in the strategy-focused organization, I'm not really referring to enhancements or basic maintenance or day-to-day -day operations or the infrastructure. I'm referring to the strategic initiatives and projects that we're uh, implementing that are going to cause change, that are going to move us from where we are to where we want to go, and that everybody in the organization understands what their role is related to these strategic initiatives. Day-to-day -day operations is one thing, and it doesn't mean that that's not vitally important. I'm just uh, emphasizing that for the purposes of our discussion today, I'm referring to that handful cro of cross-functional strategic initiatives that are involved at the enterprise level or strategic projects that are occurring within your own unit, focusing on what matters most, where it is we're trying to cause change. That's, that's the focal point that uh, I would steer you towards as you think about uh, aligning your workforce behind those vital few strategic initiatives. Now, as, I, as I've just mentioned, um, well, strategy is about change. And my guess is if we were all in a room together, and I don't know how many of us there are here, a few hundred of us, and I ask the question, how many of you really like to change? Um, there'd be a, a few snickers and then maybe 10% of you would raise your hand and say, yeah, I love to deal in an environment that's changing and it's dynamic. Um, but then if I were to ask, uh, ask you, well, the people that you work with, how many of them really like to change? Uh, you'd see some hands go down because generally people do not like change. Strategies about change, people don't like change. So one of the things that uh, I would uh, argue that's absolutely vital to anyone that's a good strategic thinker, if they want to be effective, is that they also appreciate the value and the importance of communications and change management planning. People have a right to understand what's happening to them, why we're doing it, what it means. Uh, I, would, I would further argue that given the complexity and the busy nature of organizations today, we oftentimes, most oftentimes, uh, under-communicate, maybe as much as 10 to 100-fold. And failure, to, uh, failure of good strategic thinking to be followed up by good communications and, strange, uh, and change management planning is folly. Uh, I made this argument uh, about two years ago to a, a large industry association board and senior management team uh, the first time I was in front of the, of the board and the team together. Um, and we went about executing the framework that I showed you before and the steps involved. And um, this particular um, bit of counseling that I gave to them was ignored. They went ahead, did all the planning, figured out the measurements, got the plan approved only to face rebellion at the staff level, which resulted in the CEO being asked to step aside. Uh, I, I come, again, my, my background is in, originally it was in psychology, counseling, then did the, the business school route, and undervaluing 
the important role that people play not only in formulating but especially in executing and helping them understand and prepare for that is just something that no strategic thinker can afford to make that mistake. As you think about the people in your organization where, where you, you, you reside and you think about every day, you can probably divide them into one of four categories. And this is an exercise uh, we do, uh, a survey tool that we use when we uh, run a one-day course. But the idea is if you, you ask people about uh, their motivation to, to really be a strategic thinker and, and be on the, the, the edge of change, um, there's a motivation to do that. Some people are highly motivated to do it. Um, for example, if uh, we all uh, tour us. Uh, we we get on uh, we get on we want to go places we want to see things we want to do new things uh, so we're 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 involved we want to be part of it but we may not have the skills and the expertise uh, to be able to in this case fly the plane the pilots is the one that's flying the plane they're highly motivated they've got skills uh, so some of us fall in this category. Others of us are highly motivated, but we don't have the skills. We refer to them as, as uh, tourists. And then there are some that uh, have the knowledge and skills, maybe the academic knowledge and skills, to, uh, to know about strategic thinking and be able to talk about it. But you know they're not really willing to travel the strategic thinking terrain. We refer to them as travel agents. And then, God love them, there's what we call the TSA agents. They, they neither have the motivation to travel the strategic thinking terrain, nor the knowledge and skills. Uh, every organization has folks like this. I know we have one of these people in our organization. Uh, but as you look at your workforce, you look at the people that are involved, beginning to understand kind of who fits in what category. And if we have folks, oh, sorry, that's the wrong button. If we have folks that are really motivated but don't have the skills, this really begins to get at what I was talking about before, investing, building those competencies. That, that, that's absolutely vital. So again, thinking about your workforce, they probably fall into one of these four categories and understanding how to communicate change, how to help them change is absolutely vital to any good strategic thinker. So a framework now, another framework. And this one is specifically related to strategic thinking. Um, and we'll, we'll use this to kind of help organize what we're doing going forward. So I'll, I'll talk about this in the next slide, in the next couple slides. But before I get into the framework itself, um, we're oftentimes asked to include in what we do some of the theoretical work that's been done. And I, I've looked at a bunch of this over the past several years, primarily relationship to the work I've done with ASP, is a study that Gene Lipke did back in 1998 asking where strate whether strategic thinking can be taught. Um, we make the argument that yes, it can if we invest in building the competencies that we're talking about uh, over time uh, these skills can be taught some of us will be better at it than others but yes it can be thought and what Gene points out is good strategic thinkers are intent focused they, they know what they're trying to accomplish they know what the organization's trying to accomplish and they stay focused on that uh, they're able to think in time uh, they know where we've come from, they know where we are, uh, they know where we're trying to go with this intent, you know, what it is we're trying to do. But they appreciate uh, and value where we've come from, uh, some of the challenges that we face now, and they put things in perspective. Good strategic thinkers are also hypothesis driven. They come at things with a hypothesis about what we think will work under the circumstance. I didn't say assumption driven. Assumptions get us in trouble. But hypotheses where we go out and test to see if our hypothesis is correct is a hallmark of a good strategic thinker. Good strategic thinkers in terms of their mental model 
they take advantage of new opportunities when they come along, not losing sight of what success looks like or what we're trying to get to or what the objectives happen to be, but how we're going to get there, how we're going to deploy our resources, who we're going to partner with. They, they take advantage of opportunities that present themselves because, as I said before, the environment is always changing. And then lastly, good strategic thinkers are, use a, have a systems perspective. And uh, I mean, for example, uh, where are we at in the strategy management process? Are we in implementation? Are we in value control? Are we making adjustments? They think about the entire system, the people in the system, the various units within the organization, you know, how, how their actions are going to impact others and other departments. So good strategic thinkers uh, follow, uh, uh, are able to um, capitalize on these capabilities. And, and again, I make the argument, yes, these can be taught. Uh, it's a matter of leadership helping everyone understand in the organization where we're going, empowering them to, to, uh, to execute and use their, uh, use their good head to be able to pick new opportunities and adapt as we go along. We do a, a fair amount of work, quite a bit of work actually, with mission-driven organizations and there's a group in Washington, D.C. Um, called board source. So any of you that are working with mission-driven organizations, this is a really good uh, website to be familiar with. And there is a, a quote there that, uh, that, that resonated with me the first time I read it. Strategic thinking focuses on what matters most. You know, what matters most in your organization? And then how can we think strategically? How can we think um, um, divergently? How, how do we think innovatively about ways to address those opportunities or challenges? So just a kind of a fun definition that works here really well. So back to our model again about what is strategic thinking. Well, we're going to break it in to what it's about and then kind of what strategic thinkers do. In terms of anticipating good strategic thinkers, it's all about understanding the environment around us, what the opportunities, what the challenges are, you know, being uh, deliberate about uh, taking in information and analyzing where we can move ourselves forward towards our vision and what are the problems that we need to solve along the way and being very clear about uh, not jumping over that. Strategic thinking is all about thinking critically and then as we begin to look at these opportunities and problems, understanding, well, if we do this, what's the implications of that on the people and the organization? And um, it's not just about me and my unit, but being able to understand the broader implications of the entire system. Strategic thinkers are able to visualize, you know, what could be, um, what might be. Um, you know, if we do this, this could happen. If we can bring this resource into the mix, maybe we'll be able to um, uh, accomplish what we're uh, striving for in, in this sort of way. But they don't settle in real quick. They, they visualize, they explore. Uh, they take a holistic approach to day-to-day uh, -day issues, not about just solving a specific tactical issue for today, but look holistically. If, if we're going to move into outsourcing a big part of what we do to uh, some third party, wh wh what are the implications of that for the entire organization? Not just outsourcing something in our unit, but is that going to set a precedent? Is that going to spill over into other units? So uh, it's this idea of look before you leap. Good strategic thinkers look and understand those implications holistically. They ask questions. Uh, they never just take, okay, I take it for granted, but they probe, they challenge assumptions. Just because we're hypothesis driven as good strategic thinkers, that doesn't mean that uh, others are not making assumptions. So we have to be able to challenge those assumptions, be able to ask probing questions. Um, oftentimes, and I refer to this as being a critical friend. You know how it is when you've got this friend you can take a personal problem to. And they're not going to tell you just what you want to hear. They're going to challenge 
you. They're going to probe, but they have your best interests at heart. Good, clear, strategic thinkers are critical friends. Once we've done our probing and get, we have to gather information, oftentimes what we think is just an idea, so we have to go out and gather complex data. And oftentimes it's ambiguous and hard to interpret. I was working on a, a project this morning with one of my colleagues here uh, about uh, a, a, an organization that's involved in veterinary medicine. And um, they're act very specifically, they're involved with uh, bird, bird veterinarians, Asian, um, Asian vets. And uh, they're trying to understand not only some quantitative data that's coming in from uh, their member survey, but they're also trying to discern what, is, what are these, this qualitative information that's coming from focus groups and individual interviews, and how does that match up with the what the members are saying uh, as opposed to what the environment and some of the leaders of the industry are saying. It's complex. It's ambiguous. Uh, good strategic thinkers are able to work their way through that, um, that situation and be able to come out with a clear idea of what needs to be done. With that interpretation done, then we can begin to decide, okay, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we can get our workforce aligned behind it, and we can begin to implement and learn as we go, all the while keeping our eyes open for new opportunities and better ways of doing things than we first thought of as we developed the strategy. Some of the steps, or the steps involved in strategic thinking, and it's just like anything else uh, in life. Um, Oftentimes we present these things in a linear format, and in the real world, uh, linearity is not necessarily the case. But just for ease of understanding, uh, we, we'll present them in a linear fashion here. And the, the steps involved are really broken up into two phases, uh, setting the stage for execution, and then applying strategic thinking skills as we begin to execute. So the first step is seeing the big picture. If you weren't involved, if you weren't in, weren't in the room when the strategy was developed for the organization, you may have no idea where it came from, why we're doing it, uh, let alone the people that you work with. So it starts in the beginning by seeing the big picture of where the company is going, why it's going there, and what the implications are. With, with that basic understanding in, fa in place, then it's about if you're within a, a business unit or a function or a department, uh, what objectives do I have in my unit, in my uh, subset of the organization that, that's going to help take us there? This is that alignment piece that I talked about before. But we have to understand big picture where the company is going and then what is it we need to accomplish within our unit to move us there. Once we've got that in place, now we can begin to move into executing the strategy and applying critical thinking skills. So the third step is, well, they're um, identifying relationships, patterns, trends. I mean, there's more than one way. Uh, I go back to this veterinary group that I was referring to before. Uh, I remember saying to them, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, well, it didn't go over very well with veterinarians initially, but then we got a chuckle, but they understood the point uh, that we need to uh, look across the organization, see uh, patterns of what's working and what's not and what some of the trends are and be able to simplify that information so leaders in the organization can decide where best to point the ship. Creative alternatives. This is uh, I'm going to talk about scenario planning. If we understand relationship patterns and trends, then we can look to see, okay, what are the alternative ways to be able to move us forward? So we'll talk about these four today. Uh, we won't have time to look at steps five, six, and seven, which relate to analyzing, prioritizing, and making trade-offs. And and just let me uh, make a comment now about making trade-offs. If there's um, anything that the 30 plus years of doing this sort of work has taught me is that organizations very, very often try and do too much with too few resources. 
everything is important that comes out of the strategy, that's true. But resources are limited, which requires that we make tra we prioritize and make trade-offs. And if we go into it understanding that what comes out of the strategy uh, may need to be narrowed and adapted and better focused as we go into the strategic operating plan, and then ultimately, and even more so, when we get into execution, we're far ahead of the game. So these are the steps. And let's, 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 let's tackle them now, kind of one by one. So the steps involved in strategic thinking. The first is to see the big picture. Seek to understand, you know, what is the corporate strategy? And if you don't know, uh, begin to talk to your boss and uh, your peers and listen and observe what kind of communication is taking place and what the messaging is. And then be able to step back from that and be able to discuss it with others. That, that, that's, a, that's step one in seeing the big picture. Step two is being able to do some due diligence on your own to gain clarity about why it is we're moving in that direction. So you might ask, you know, okay, why is that the case? Why is that so important? Well, ultimately, you're going to have to turn to the people that you work with and help them understand the big picture. And they need to know that you know what you're talking about. So doing the due diligence yourself, reading the reports that have come out, talking to people about why we're doing what we're doing, lays the groundwork for strategic thinking to take place. The fiercest enemy of thinking and acting strategically, by far and away, is the whirlwind of day-to-day -day operations. I mean, we all know this. We can have the best intentions about strategy execution, you know, about being good strategic thinkers, but the day-to-day -day whirlwind of day-to-day -day operations so often gets in the way. And Peter Drucker so rightly helped us understand that the culture of the organization eats strategy for breakfast. So it is so important for um, us as leaders in an organization charged with execution, understanding where it came from, what it means, being able to uh, validate that where we're going makes sense based on our own understanding of the environment and then we're positioned to be able to talk intelligently and effective with those we work with. Here's a framework that I use um, quite frequently uh, in, in my work in terms of assessing the environment, look at the external environment, where are the opportunities and threats, where are our capabilities and relationship, where there's an intersection of capabilities and environment, those are relevant for us to consider. But then taking one step further and saying, okay, of all these opportunities um, that were in front of the planning team when they developed the strategy, you know, how did they match up with our core competencies and competitive advantages? To the extent we can lever our core competencies, our competitive advantage, we vastly mitigate the risk involved in execution of the strategy. But this thought process, this decision-making process, before we articulate the overall uh, strategic direction of the organization is what I'm getting at. And so getting inside the people, the heads of the people that were in their room, being able to understand why we're doing, how it matches with our core competencies, what our capabilities are, is core to all of this. So looking at the external environment, and this is something that um, many of you may be familiar with, but as you think about the external environment, the, um, I mean, I, I, we've often hear the term SWOT analysis. I, d I don't think about it in terms of a SWOT analysis. I think about it in terms of an OTSWI evaluation, O-T-S-W. Strategy comes from uh, understanding the external environment before we ever come to the internal environment. And when we think about the external environment, there's the macro level and then there's the industry level. I mean, any of you that live in the United States or on planet Earth and have been following what's going on in uh, <clears throat> excuse me, our domestic politics, uh, we all understand uh, strategy execution is going to be uh, very different <clears throat> depending on who wins the, um, the presidential election. We all see what's happening with sociocultural changes. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm fighting a, something in my throat here. Um, 
immigration policy, whether it's what's happening in Syria or what's happening on the, the, the Mexican border here in the United States, that impacts all of us. What's happening related to the, the, our, our precious environment on planet Earth and techno the economy. You know, if we were if, if we're looking at what's going on with Brexit now, I mean, we could be watching the unraveling of the EU. Uh, good strategic thinkers follow these forces. Uh, they understand in the industry environment who the key stakeholders are, what are their needs, wants, and expectations. We, 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 we uh, thinkers understand this. Now we don't have time to get into first, but I do want to pick one. Uh, we need to understand. Uh, well, and I'll come back to that in a minute. I got ahead of myself. So in terms of the macro level. We're moving from about 7 billion people on this planet to 9 billion people. I mean, what is the implication of that for your organization over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Strategic thinkers take time to answer that question. With going from 7 to 9 billion people, there's, there's already water scarcity. I mean, it's the lifeblood, water. What, what happens if we're unable to meet the water needs of this planet. Major implications that uh, policy thinkers and you know, anyone involved in policy has to be thinking about. And I would argue we all need to think about it. Uh, we do some work <coughs> with uh, a professor at the University of Illinois, uh, Don Webos. He's an atmospheric scientist. Um, he's uh, a member of the President's National Climate Assessment a very capable man and research that he has done tells us that the climate here in Illinois where we are uh, depending on whether it's a an average a high or a low emission carbon scenario Illinois climate as we move into the rest of this uh, century is going to slip south it's going to skip south and if you're in uh, agriculture for example uh, the growing climate in uh, central Texas is very different than what it is here in Illinois. Under this scenario, C Canada's climate is going to be more like Illinois is used to. So we have to think about these things. They're not thinking, well, we don't have to think about it. That's going to go away. It's not going to go away. It's part of us, and we need uh, strategic thinkers to be aware, and what can we do to mitigate and adapt um, our situation to be able to to cope with the changing climate going forward. Here's what I was getting at before. So what I've just spoken about is more the macro level, and I, I focused on population growth and climate, but we could pick any number of factors. But now at the industry level, you know, one of our key stakeholders is, is our competitors. They have a vested interest in our success or failure. If we succeed, they may fail. If we fail, they may succeed. They, they have a vested interest. And we need to understand from uh, a, a strategic thinking point of view, are we approaching competition in terms of head-to-head -head competition, what I would call the bloody red ocean, where we're trying to take market share away from our competitors? Or is the strategy based on uh, creating uncontested market space? more of a blue ocean strategy where we're going to try and differentiate ourselves um, um, based on um, both value and cost uh, and, and break that uh, um, value cost trade-off. We're going to create uncontested market space uh, which really uh, mitigates a lot of the competitive forces. As, as a leader, as a strategic thinker in our organization, from a market perspective we should know whether uh, we're in a bloody red ocean or a blue ocean. Hey, Randy. Yes. Candace is just giving me a heads up. She thinks we have about eight to ten minutes left um, before the uh, the webinar will be cutting off. I'll be finishing up just in time. So, uh, in terms of core competency, be very clear about what it is. So, as you pick those opportunities, you're clear with your team on why we're able to do it. So in summary, in relation to this, good strategic thinkers are able to differentiate between, uh, understand the relationship between execution and seeing the big picture. That means that uh, they are able to walk and chew gum at the next same time, focusing on the next three steps, 
They know what's in front of them, but they also see the big picture. Strategic thinkers are able to execute and see the big picture. And then we must articulate our objectives. As I said before, understand what we're doing as a unit, as an individual, what are the outcomes that we really seek, and then making sure that whatever is involved here, we make it smart, specific, measurable, attainable, responsible, and time limited. The st third step is understanding relationships, patterns, and trends uh, as they are across the organization. Um, being able to spot those trends and patterns, that's again a real hallmark is being able to look out and see what's going on in various places and then be able to use that information to help us focus. The fourth step is this idea of creative thinking, looking at alternatives, visualizing new possibilities uh, so that you can create new value for your organization. And there's various ways about doing that. I really like the scenario planning exercise. We think of scenario planning just being related to strategy formulation, but it also has a vital role and it's a great tool to use in strategy execution, uh, looking at the strategy, different ways to approach it, exploring each of the scenarios goes a long way to stimulating creative thinking. There's also work that's been done by Creighton Christensen related to the innovator's dilemma. And here it's the well-managed companies. They sometimes fail for the reasons that made them successful to begin with because some new disruptive technology comes along. So uh, understanding, and th there's kind of a history lesson here, if you think back uh, on Blockbuster Video, they, they were very innovative. They understood the customer requirements over time. They just kept adding value, drop off, buy popcorn, order online, and all of a sudden their value proposition exceeded what customers value, and that opened the door for, uh, for places like Netflix and Redbox to come in and steal their market away, and you know how many blockbusters you see around today. Uh, currently, we see this going on in the taxi industry. Uber has just totally disrupted uh, the, uh, the taxi industry. So being able to think about how we can experiment with new technologies, new ways, before someone comes in and steals our market share. And then lastly, on the horizon, horizon it's very difficult for me to envision this, but uh, the idea that uh, UPS and uh, uh, and FedEx are going to be disrupted by drones delivering packages. Uh, it remains to be seen whether this is actually going to materialize, but taking to heart the innovator's dilemma and uh, the, the guidance that it gives us about beginning to experiment new creative ways with new technologies is at the heart of this. So we've talked about these steps now. Um, and we're not able to come to the last three because of time. Um, I wanted to mention to you this all, this course is, uh, this webinar comes from a one day course uh, that we do and uh, some of the details are there. Uh, if um, you're interested in any of this, would you like to pursue it further, just send me an email. I'll be happy to send you the, the PowerPoint deck. We've also got a, a prioritization tool that we're going to send you. Um, the course, um, we can customize it. Uh, here are some of the resources that we use. This book here, Thinking Strategically, a Pocket Mentor by Harvard Business Press, is one of the primary uh, tools that we use. And then uh, here are some of the, the takeaways. So in summary, um, that's my contact information. I welcome an opportunity to interact with all of you. So Doug, I'll stop there, and then we can take some questions. Okay, thank you, Randy, and um, I apologize for the interruption before. We had a timer that was showing. We were afraid it was going to cut us off, but we found out that it is not. So we do have some time for some questions. So let me um, lift up the first question. Um, uh, uh, one of the attendees asks, what is the best way for dealing with TSA agents even after the business case has been presented and demonstrated? accepting people where they are, um, doing our best to make sure they understand and bringing them along slowly, understanding that people uh, don't change that much over time. Um, it, it's, um, 
is that critical friend role. Uh, facilitation skills can help. Coaching can help. But uh, my inclination is to uh, really um, not get bogged down in that, but uh, just move ahead and bring people along as best you can. Okay, we have another question come in, asks, um, how should one apply the framework, the strategy management performance system framework, in an environment that is culturally focused on keeping the lights on and always in a firefighting mode? Don't. Don't do it. Until there's a willingness at the top of the organization um, to uh, think about what's coming at them and in a systematic way um, define where we're going and where we're going to, how we're going to get there, I wouldn't do it. it. All it will do is lead to frustration. If, if, if there isn't a willingness and a, at the leadership level to uh, think this through and apply the tools and techniques we know, uh, I would say don't do it. You risk your, your own well-being um, in the organization. I've seen it too many times to try and change the all-knowing leader, um, the culture, uh, when there's not a willingness to confront that we've got a problem. So be very careful. Okay, and then I think our final question we have time for is um, what about when you have to test initiatives and get validated learning of the strategy? Well, I'm not quite sure what, the, what that question is getting at, but I'll, I'll take a stab at it anyway. Um, l let's imagine that we have a good, clear vision of success. So, you know, we're locked in on what our purpose is and values, and we know what the one or two overarching goals are in our organization. You know, we, you know, we've got a clear idea of what the key drivers of success are and how we're going to approach them. And then it comes down to uh, that handful of strategic initiatives that we know is going to lead the change and move us from where we are to where we want to go. The way to do it is right then and there to define the outcomes we expect from this initiative not just how many people are going to attend the conference, but how are attitudes going to change? What are the concrete measurable actions, uh, outputs, outcomes that are going to come from executing the initiative? Making sure people understand very specifically what we're going to try and accomplish, and before we go forward with execution, define what uh, success looks like for those strategic initiatives and projects. All right, thank you so much, Randy, and I'd like to say thank you to all who participated today. As Randy said, we would love to come to your organization and do this one-day event, which we have done with organizations large and small, um, where we come in for a full day and work with your leadership related to their strategic thinking capabilities. So with that, we are going to sign off. One last reminder, we have recorded today's webinar, and you will be receiving an email in the next 48 hours or so with a link to that recorded webinar. With that, thank you so much. On behalf of the Strategy Management Group, we appreciate your attendance today.